Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Are you blessed and highly favored? Amen. You're blessed and highly flavored too. Because we're the salt of the world. Amen. Praise God. God is good, isn't he? All the time. You know, I love when the Lord interrupts our life and shakes it. <laughs> Why? He's bringing something new. Amen. He's bringing something new. He's trying to bring a reality to each and every one of us. There's an area where people have relationship, but there's a difference between relationship. We need to have a love affair. Amen? That's what God looks for, a love affair. Oh, glory. Would you grab your Bibles, your manuals, your swords? Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. <laughs> if you didn't bring a sword, you should have. And if you don't have them, we have them. Amen? Training for reigning. Training for reigning. Everyone say, God, God. trying to train me. The word says, Jesus told him, he said, look it, come to me and what? Learn from me. God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Amen. Understanding. We need to be trained in Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. These are training sessions with a powerful manual. Amen? We are soldiers of the body of Christ. Jesus is not a wimp. Amen? Amen. He's called the Lord of hosts because he is the Lord of the army. We are not in a religious state. I hate religiosity. Amen. This is not about a religious move of God. It's about a rescue move. Amen. Jesus came. You and I have been sent into this world to fulfill a mission. You know, I didn't come. God, God did not rescue me to enjoy my life. Amen. He rescued me to introduce people to the life giver. Amen. Amen. And that's why he's rescued you. In fact, the word says, he who finds his life will what? Lose it. And he who loses his life will what? Find it. Yeah. People would know if they just read the Bible. In Acts chapter 9 and verse 1. Are you ready? It says, Saul, would you read it with me? Still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus so that he would find anyone who was of the way, in other words, were born again of the Spirit of God, whether men or women, that he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. So here Saul was a very religious man. He wanted to do everything to, for God. He had the desire to please God. The problem was he was pleased him according to traditions of men, not according to the Spirit. Amen. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Sometimes you and I need to hit the wall of reality to say, you know what, what's happening? And he said, who are you? Lord. Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goats. So he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Oh, praise God. Lord, see when he's Lord. See, there's a difference between Jesus being Savior than being Lord. When he's Lord, he's Lord over your life. That's when you say, what do you want me to do today? What, what can I do for you? Amen. There's a difference between Lord and and Savior. Oh, praise God. Amen. Now, and he's, he trembling, and the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. You think he obeyed him? You betcha. Of course, he couldn't see anyways. 
And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. And Saul arose from the ground. When his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight and neither ate or drank. I'd say God kind of like put him into fast and prayer a little mode. Amen. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision. Ananias, he said, Lord, here I am. And the Lord said, arise, go to the street called Straight. And inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many, many things about this man and how much harm he has done to your people and your saints in Jerusalem. And he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. The Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him many things he must suffer for my sake. That's why the Bible says that it is narrow and difficult. Amen. Amen. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came has sent me that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. So immediately there what? Fell from his eyes something like scales and had received his sight at once and he rose and he was baptized. So when his disciples received, when he received food, he was strengthened and Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. And it says, and immediately he preached the what? The Christ. He preached the eternal presence and power of God Almighty. The Christ. The anointed one. Why? Because this is what the new covenant is. This is new, it's a ministry of the spirit, not of the letter. He was preaching God's eternal presence and power and truth. He was preaching the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He was preaching, come on. That's what happened to him, didn't it? I mean, prior to that, what was he? He was a man that wanted to please God through tradition. But he really didn't have a relationship, did he? Amen, there's a difference. Let me share with you that this experience changed Paul. In fact, his name was Saul, and he changed it to Paul. I want you to understand something, that God wants everyone to have an encounter with him. Everyone. It's life changing. Now, what you just heard, what happened to Saul, happened to me. 23 years ago. Laying next to a pool. Lord came and visited me. I was a desperate man. I hit the wall of reality. I was about to go back to prison again. I was an addict for over 20 years, in the drug world for over 20 years. You name it, I did it. But I got to a place where nothing helped me. I tried programs. That's all I did was teach me demon management. I wasn't free. If you have to be busy to stay free, you ain't free. I wanted freedom. In fact, I didn't believe in the Bible because when I was a kid, somebody told me that it was nothing but a story. So why would I want the Bible? So I didn't believe in anything. And a gentleman came by my house who was in a drug war with me for over tw uh, about two years, and, and I hadn't seen him in a long time. He said, man, you're a mess. You need Jesus. I said, yeah, everybody goes from drugs to Jesus. But I was at my wit's end. I tried everything. I was divorced for three years now. My wife had left. I lost everything. I finally hit the wall of reality, getting ready to go back to prison. And I said, God, if you're out there, I believe that you're out there. I was told to accept Jesus Christ as Lord today. Take this life, do something with it. Because I'm a mess. Well, within seconds, he showed up. 
literally showed up. No dream, no vision, no fantasy. His presence showed up. I was taken in the glory of God. I realized that it was his presence that I always wanted to get high. That's why I wanted to get high. Because I came from that greatest high that there is. The eternal presence of God. Everyone came from that presence. That's why everybody wants to feel good. I mean, man, I want to feel good. Yeah, everybody wants. Oh, you came from the greatest feel good. Everyone came from God's presence. The problem is the rule of this world who is Satan counterfeits God's presence. So he puts everything else. Even success can bring, bring, become a temporary feel good. But it isn't until you have that encounter, that experience with the presence of God that you realize nothing else can fulfill you. Nothing. And here I was, laying next to this pool. Never read the Bible. Just accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. He showed up, filled me. I was taken in a cloud of glory, taken to the other side. I realized that I was his son and he's my dad. And I've been lied to my whole life, even going to church. I was lied to. Not that they lied to me on purpose. They just carried the traditions of men and didn't know the difference themselves. I began to, this funny language flew out of my mouth. Man, I was praying in this wild language, just like what you heard. It's a gift. It's a gift to everyone that's been baptized in the Holy Spirit. For everyone. You don't earn it. You ask for it. And you seek it. Look at it. If you don't want something, God ain't going to give it to you. Amen. Amen. And there's something that you and I can't give. Something we haven't experienced. If you've never replaced a flat tire and you got a flat tire, you know what? You need to call for help. Because you don't know how to do it. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, then you, don't, you haven't had that experience. If you've never cast out a devil, you've never had that experience. If you've never laid hands on the sick and watched them get healed and life be restored into a body, you've never had that experience. The problem is, is the powers of darkness don't want you to have that experience. And that experience can only come with an open heart. An open heart. But I can tell you the enemy wants to steal that experience or prevent that experience from happening in our lives. Is everybody okay? Yes. Glory. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3 for a second. Oh, hallelujah. After my experience with the Lord... And of course, in that presence of God, an evil thing came out of my body, which my 80-pound Doberman dog even was fighting. This long, black, hissing snake. See, when God shows up, every demonic force just leaves. And I was so concerned about my dog, I said, Lord, what do I do? The next thing I know, out of my mouth, my hand went towards this black serpent snake. And said, from the love of God, I curse you, Satan. Man, I didn't. I, I'm like, what the heck just came out of my mouth? And I said to the Lord, man, this stuff only happens in Star Trek. <laughs> and he said, no, guy, that came out of you. And let me tell you, I never had another desire to use drugs, drink, or look for another high in my life. And that's been over 23 years ago. You know what I'm high on now? His presence. I'm addicted to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I love him. Glory. Philippians chapter 3. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Amen. And let me tell you, even afterwards, I wanted to go, man, I wanted to tell everybody. Yeah. I wanted to tell everybody. I mean, if you have an encounter with the King of Glory and God Almighty and you get delivered and healed, and I was a sick puppy. You want to tell everybody about the truth. Man, I wanted to do outreaches. I wanted to do all kinds of stuff. And God placed me in the church in a fellowship where miracle signs and wonders were manifesting. People were being healed and all kinds of things. Devils were being removed and all kinds of stuff. 
And it wasn't any denomination or anything. It was just a, a spirit-filled church, and they're just doing what the Word says. And then I wanted to do an outreach in these certain locations because all of these addicts were living there. And I wanted to go to the, some of the churches. And I went to some of the churches and wanted to speak to the pastors. And I said, listen, we're, we're here to help to try and do outreaches. And, and he said, who are you? And I said, my name. And I started telling him my experience. And he told me I was crazy. <laughs> and, and I left that building. And I was walking down the driver and I said, Lord, why don't they know? And he said, he, he don't know me. He don't know me. I thought, he don't know you? What do you mean? He's the pastor of a church. He's got a large congregation. He don't know you? No. He only knows me by letter, what he reads about me, like Sports Illustrated. But he doesn't know me personally. That whoa. And he said, don't go to the next one unless I send you. I said, okay. <laughs> you got that. Glory. <laughs> Philippians 3. Hey, I was excited that I was on fire. I was a young Christian. I wanted to tell everybody about my experience. I still want to tell everyone about my experience. I still don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up. And I love it. Why? Because he unfolds his will. You just got to talk to him every day and he releases commands. But if you don't have a true love affair, you don't hear. If your heart's not open, you don't experience. We go to this place, we have signs made, right? And there's this guy in there that's an atheist. And every time I go in there and wants to ask me questions, I'm thinking, what do you want to ask me questions for? He says, I don't know, there's something about you I want to ask. So he asked me these questions, and I share a couple of things, and then he always tries to negate it. I'm thinking, what the heck, you're wasting my breath. So finally, he says something. He says, I have an open mind. I says, but you don't have an open heart. And I'm telling the Holy Spirit struck, whoom, and hit this man right in his heart. He said, you're right. I have an open mind, but I don't have an open heart. I said, your open mind only brings you a relationship with people. And maybe even a relationship with God. But your open heart will bring a love affair. And that's a difference. And too many believers have a relationship of intellect and not an open heart of a love affair. There's a difference. Glory, Philippians chapter 3, in verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you, it's safe. <laughs> Beware of what? Dogs. These are not woof, woof, okay? These are demon-possessed individuals, demonized, wolves in sheep's clothing. Beware of what? Dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit, that means with your mouth. Amen. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in your own strength or flesh. And here's Paul speaking. He says, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised. He, he begins to explain himself. Circumcised the eighth day, the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, the body of believers, concerning righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these things I have counted lost for what? The anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. I counted all what? Lost. Yet, indeed, I what? Also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ or gain more of his presence, gain more of him. 
and be found in him, not having my righteous, my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him, everyone say know him, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. That was Paul prior until he got filled with the Holy Spirit. He was a man that wanted to please God by persecuting Christians who were filled with God. And he realized after God gave him that experience, <laughs> amen, that what he was doing was wrong. Did God forgive him? Yeah. Amen. And he became a powerful man of God. But see, Paul was living by traditions, not by the Spirit. It's different. And Ezekiel 36 Open heart is today's teaching. Without an open heart, there is no experiences. And sometimes God allows us and causes us to become, get into a place of a what? Open heart. Because if a heart's not open, it's hard. Amen. Ezekiel 36, 22. Is everybody okay? Would you read it with me? The Lord speaking to I, uh, Ezekiel says, Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst, and the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God. When I am what? When I am hallowed in, your, in their eyes. In other words, when I am reverenced, when I am honored, when I am respected, that means the fear of the Lord has come in you. Has everybody got it? When I am hallowed in you, for I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all of your idols. How many of you all know you can be the idol? Amen. I will give you a new, new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will take out the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my what? My spirit. I love it. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do what? Do and do them. Hallowed is reference to the Lord, honor, respect. And, and in this, in other words, he's saying, in this scripture he says, there's going to become an awakening. Amen? An awakening. And there's going to become an empowerment. Many people have been awakened but not empowered. There's a difference. There's an awakening and then an empowerment with the Holy Spirit and a new heart. But it doesn't happen until we get a place where we're, we're willing to open our heart and become humble and do what? Repent. Because the blood must cleanse us and the Spirit is access. Amen? So in this, there's that, that two place where we are awakened and then we are empowered. But it all starts with what? An open heart. Not an open mind. An open heart. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3. But he said he'd give us a new heart, wouldn't he? A new spirit. And he'd give us the power of the Holy Spirit so that we could obey. Second Corinthians 3. Verse 1. Somebody there? Let's speak it. 
but we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some other epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Everybody speak this. You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of the flesh, that is, the heart. And we have such trust through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. We also, who also what? Made us sufficient as what? Ministers of the new covenant. Well, what is the ministry of the new covenant? It is called the ministry of the spirit. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter does what? Kills, but the Spirit gives life. Again, the letter kills, and the Spirit gives life. The letter kills, and the Spirit gives life. In John chapter 16. John chapter 16, Gospel of John. Open heart. John 16 and verse 7. Jesus is speaking. And he says something very powerful. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the what? Truth. I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I what? That I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will what? Convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Who's the ruler of this world? Satan and his kingdom. It's amazing. People still don't believe that there's a devil. They still don't believe people have demons. They don't even realize what's speaking to them and influencing them. Verse 12. I still have what? Many things to say to you, but you cannot what? Bear them now. Why? Because they couldn't interpret what he was saying until they had the Holy Spirit. Because he's the one that interprets. Who wrote this word? Amen. So if you communicate and have fellowship with the author... You can interpret this correctly. Other than that, the only thing you're going to do is interpret it as surface level. You'll never go deep. A little further. Verse 13. However, when he, what? The spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will, what? Tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said, he will take of mine and declare it to you. Wow, that's powerful, isn't it? That he's going to what? Declare it to you. He's going to guide you to all truth. He's going to tell you things to come. Because he's known as the spirit of truth. But you've got to have an open heart, don't you? Oh, hallelujah. He's the one who interprets. Second, uh, Second Corinthians. No, let's not. Let's go to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. If you don't learn, you get burned. Matthew 16 and verse 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Matthew 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, and one of the prophets. 
So he was asking him, what do men say about me? Then he got personal. He said, so, and, and of course they responded. They said, well, some say that you're John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Then Jesus stopped and he said, listen, who do you say I am? Do you really know me? Who do you say that I am? Am I someone you, you just read about? Or am I someone that you have experience with? There's a difference. And Simon Barjona, Simon answered and said, You are the Christ. You are the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, the anointed one, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on the rock, mean revelation, on this revelation, I will build my church. What's the revelation? The anointing. He just expressed to Peter that the eternal presence and power of Jesus Christ, of God Almighty, will be the foundation, which is known as the Holy Spirit. Has everybody got it? He's the foundation. And then the Word of God is built on the foundation. And I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I'm going to do something else. I'm going to give you what? Keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In other words, I'm going to give you dominion to attack the powers of darkness. And whatever you speak in this realm will penetrate into the unseen realm. Glory. He's going to build his church on the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty called the anointing. Jesus is the head. This revelation was a true experience, and Peter changed. Changed. Amen? Eventually, he got baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, and then he was trained by the Holy Spirit. I want to go to Revelation chapter 12 for a second. Revelation chapter 12. Is everybody there? In verse 7. Revelation 12, verse 7. What does it say? And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who does what? Deceives the whole world. Is he still deceiving? Yes. Yes. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ has come for the accusing of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they what? They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the what? Word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Now we talked about um, the third level, their third level of commitment, which is not loving your life to death. And that's one of the things God's trying to bring us to. But there's a, a level where he says the word of their testimony. How many all know that experience is testimony? Experiences is testimony. Now we know the greatest miracle is salvation. Amen? But how many all know there's more? In fact, that's the first door to enter. Then there's so much more. Then there's multiple places. There's multiple levels God wants us to go to. He wants him to be seen in us. That means power. It's not just about knowledge. It's about the presence of God in our life. The power to say no. The power to lay hands on the sick. The power to remove darkness from someone. The power. It says that we should have signs and wonders following us. Whether it be the gifts of the Spirit, whatever it is. It's revealing God's with you. Does everybody understand that? Testimony. 
testimonies come by experiences. Does everybody understand? It's vitally important because God wants to build your testimony. In fact, my daughter is in another church today giving a testimony because the Lord healed her leg. She was at a youth group. And she had a boot on because she broke her ankle and the Lord healed her leg. So she's giving testimony today. Praise God. I'm waiting for the rest of it to come, but we'll start with an ankle. <laughs> Praise God. Jeremiah 17. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah 17. In verse 5. Thus says the Lord, curses a man who trusts in man and makes his, makes his flesh his strength whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert, in other words, dry. Shall not see when good comes. Because he can't get into a place of surrender. He's always in a place of survival. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and the salt land, which is not inhabited. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is, is in the Lord. For he shall be planted by, he shall be like a tree planted by the what? Waters. Rivers of living water. Which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green and he will not be anxious in the year of drought nor shall cease from yielding fruit. Read it with me, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Cursed or blessed. Heart is deceitful. Curses the man who trusts in man, blesses the man who trusts in the, in the Lord. And in this, we got to come to a place where, you know what? The Bible says that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He's the most cunning beast. The Lord said, I come to give you life and life abundantly. And in this life abundantly, it's in him. It's in him. Man, I had all kinds of things. I lost it all. But in him I had everything. I've never been so rich in my life. I am so rich now, I can't handle it. And it ain't got nothing to do with a bank account or materialism. I have the richness of his presence. I don't fear death. I don't live for me, I live for him. And I can't wait to go home. But in the meantime, because this world really stinks. Hello? It's nasty, disgusting, and it's ruled by Satan's kingdom. So we are called to what? Battle. Our purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom, and our destiny is to infiltrate the world system with the power of God. Is everybody okay? Matthew 25. Matthew 25. Starting at verse 1. Would you read it with me? Is everybody there? Jesus was giving them a parable. The kingdom of heaven shall be like, like in what? Ten virgins who took their lamps and went out and to meet the bridegroom. Now I want you to understand that virgins also represent washed by the blood. 
How many of y'all know you're a virgin? Don't let the mirror dictate who you are. Amen. Don't let your past dictate who you are. You let truth dictate who you are. Don't let emotions dictate and feelings dictate who you are. Because then you'll lose your identity. Virgins, a representation here is those who are washed by the blood of Christ, believers. He said, now there are five of them that were wise and five that were what? Foolish. But those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. That means filling of the Holy Spirit. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. All the believers, all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. I can tell you that you cannot buy oil from another believer. You must go purchase it yourself. And that purchase means the price is cooperation. You must become humble with an open heart. But the wise answered and said, Nah, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Why? Because... They were practicing lawlessness. These were individuals that said they were Christians, but they were still touching unclean things. They approved of abortion. They approved same-sex marriage. They approved of things that God disapproves of. Does everybody understand that? And see, what you approve of that God disapproves of, you will be judged the same way. See, they thought they could live forever because they accepted Jesus. Wrong doctrine. Who you serve when you die is where you go. Then we wouldn't need to repent, would we? We just go out and do whatever we want. And he said this. He said, look it, because you were practicing lawlessness. I don't know you. Verse 13, he said, watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is what? Is coming. We know neither the day nor the hour. See, they might have had an experience. Some of them maintained it. The other ones, they allowed to get steal. It was stolen from them. When we get that experience, even a salvation experience, whatever that experience is in in your life, the devil comes to steal. The more experiences you have, the more you can give. The more your testimony is. How many of y'all know when you see prayer answered, does it increase your faith? Yeah. Oh, man. How about when you, when you pray for someone and they get healed right there? Woohoo! Yeah. Or somebody's having a seizure. Instead of dialing 911, you cast out the deaf and dumb spirit and they get, whoa. See, but if you're not filled with the presence of God, then the heaven of God's not here either. Has everybody got it? That's why we pray, let heaven come on earth as it is in heaven. Right? Well, it's going to come through his people. That means that you and I got to maintain that area of position where we stay humble, stay filled, and stay, have an open heart to experience, experience, experience. I love to experience things with the Spirit. Man, it gives you encouragement. You stay filled with this. You stay joyful all the time. It's for everyone. Miserable Christians need to stay home until they get slam dunked in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. What occurred with these individuals? They were not maintaining an open heart to the Lord. They didn't maintain a humbleness. Or childlikeness. They weren't all trusting. Their hearts became hardened. They became religious. They allowed the traditions of false doctrine to take hold of them. 
It wasn't, that was not correctly interpreted by the Holy Spirit. In 1 Timothy chapter 4. Harden their hearts. First Timothy chapter four. And verse one, would you read it with me? Is everybody there? First Timothy chapter four. Let's speak it. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith. How? Taking heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of what? Demons. Doctrines of what? Demons. Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. That is considered a Luciferian agenda. It is to stop the power of God or for the power of God to be known. This may sound very strange to you, but even in, a, in, in our governmental garbage which is going on, if people really understood, and I'm not about the political arena, amen, but I'm about truth. And I hate lies. And I can tell you that the Democratic Party is under a Luciferian agenda and doctrine. Big time. And, and not, then I, I was watching on TV. Now you've got these uh, Republican women that are going to vote for Clinton because they don't like Trump. So they must be wolves in sheep's clothing because they're going to vote for a Luciferian doctrine. Does everybody understand this? This is Satan's deception. If anybody ever follows the democratic agenda and what's going on, you will find out that they promote evil. They're the ones that are imposing to remove God from this country. But the, the devil, the powers of darkness, blind individuals. So they listen to the traditional things that are handed down, never seeking themselves. That was one thing that I learned. Seek with all of your heart and you will find. If you're truly seeking with all of your heart, you will find. Amen? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Open heart. Is your heart open? First Corinthians twelve. Is everybody with me? Is everybody there? What does he say? What's the first verse? Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be what? Ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles, carried away these dumb idols, however you led. Therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the what? Same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Spirit, same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the what? Profit of all in hope that a what? Experience will be encountered. For one is given the word of wisdom. It doesn't mean that one person can only do the word of wisdom. Does everybody get it? He's just giving you categories. Uh, watch this. These are all the gifts of the Spirit. For one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit another a word of knowledge through the same Spirit, another faith by the same Spirit, another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, another to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. 
but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. In other words, they are tools. They work when needed. But if you're filled with the Spirit of God, it's the same Spirit. It doesn't mean you can do this, but you can't. He just brought a category. Does everybody understand this? So it's available for everyone. I mean, I can lay hands on the sick. Yes. Can I pray in tongues? Yes. Can you interpret? Yes. As you are led by the Spirit. Can you have words of knowledge? Yes. Can you have words of wisdom? Yes. Does everybody get it? It's for everyone. God is no respecter of person, and he ain't changed. It's man belief system that's changed. Let's go to ver uh, chapter 14. So we don't want to be, in other words, we don't want the enemy to stop, to interfere, to intrude, or prevent the power of God from flowing through us. We want all Jesus did for us. But there's got to be an open heart, doesn't there? Yeah, there's got to be an open heart. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 1, what does it say? Pursue what? Love and what? Desire spiritual gifts. So if you don't desire, you don't get it. That's, that's up to you. And it's got nothing to do with salvation. Does anybody understand? It's got nothing to do with salvation. But especially that you may what? Prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to who? God. For no one understands him. Thank God, because the devil knows exactly what you think. That's why when you pray in the Spirit, you're praying directly to God, and you're praying His perfect will, and the devil can't interpret it. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speak edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you all prophesied. Paul desired it everyone, but many people rejected it. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. That experience, that's an experience, isn't it? When that experience comes, it adds to your testimony. It's life-changing. Experience. Look at the experience that happened to Saul. Even King Saul had an experience, if you recall. What did the Lord tell him to do? He said, go hang around with the prophets and the Spirit of the Lord is going to come upon you. What's going to happen to you? You're going to be changed into another man. Thank God. The problem is, is he lost that experience. And then he began to go after David, who had the experience. Oh, hallelujah. In Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Open heart. Glory. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, Luke wrote this, until the day in which he was taken up after he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs being seen by them during 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, he did something. He commanded them. He did what? He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. He said, look, John truly baptized with water. Okay, that's called remission of sin. But you shall be baptized by the Holy Spirit not many days from now. He was emphasizing that. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in their own authority. But you shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and all of Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now, I want you to know that he commanded this so that these individuals would have that experience 
and begin to take that testimony of the power of God. It's not stopped. Amen? He commanded them to wait for that experience, that encounter of his presence. Now, I want you to know that he told 500 of them and only 120 showed up. Those 120 changed, changed the world and it spread. But he told 500 of them. The other 120 missed the experience of the encounter. Does everybody understand that? And there are still people still missing the experience and the encounter of the Lord. Is everybody okay? But it's available for anyone who's willing to open their heart and seek. God wants to visit you. Hebrews 3. Hebrews chapter 3. Peter was preaching, and while he was preaching, the Holy Spirit fell on everyone there, and they all began to speak in tongues and prophesy. They were magnifying God because their hearts were open. They were hungry. How many of y'all want more of God? How many of y'all want more? Are you hungry and thirsty for more of what he has for you? Or are you content in your religious state of being? Amen? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 7, let's speak it. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will what? Hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray. Where? In their hearts. Why? Because their hearts were not open. They were hardened. And they have not known my way. So I swore my wrath. They shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in what? Rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but those who did not obey? So, we see that they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. They could not enter in. Because of what? Unbelief. Again, God wants an experience with you. Not just one time. Not just salvation. But experiences. Encounters. Visitations. Why? You're building that testimony. He's a dad that loves his children. He knows when we get discouraged. Amen? He knows when things... How many of y'all know he knows it all? Amen? There isn't anything. He just said in the Word, through John, that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, He sent to me and you that we may know all things and things to come and that He's declared all things to His Spirit, that the Spirit may declare all things to me and you. We need to have the power of God to say no to the temptation. We need to have the power of God to move the forces of evil. Listen, the powers of God, the, power, the powers of the devil, demons know whether you're carrying the fullness of the light or partial. Amen? They know whether you're living out of your head or out of your spirit. They know. Living out of your head is not victorious. It's temporary. But when you begin to live out of the Spirit, you walk in power and not fear. Even the Word says that we're not to acknowledge Jesus as He was here physically, but we're to acknowledge Him in another state, state of being. 
If you see him now, he don't look like he was here. Woolly hair, fiery eyes. I mean, powerful. Amen? Experience builds testimony and moves us from one place to another. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We apply the blood of Jesus on this seed. And Father, we desire, we open our hearts. We don't shut our hearts to you, Lord. We open our hearts to you because we want more of you. We want to see more, we want to hear more, and we want to experience more that we may be your signs and wonders and trophies for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen.